Yes, let, let's stay on this point for a moment in terms of China and the structural changes that we're seeing and the impact on the rest of the world. Kayu, your thoughts? Um, let us be reminded that only two years ago, China was, was considered to be a ticking financial bomb. So what we're seeing as a recent slowdown is simply a consequence of the government, um, a government's very successful effort to deleverage. So if we look at uh, the kind of deleveraging uh, the different uh, sectors, financial sectors deleveraging has been quite successful. Most of the debt to assets have stabilized. Household debt is increasing, but household debt was very low and one can argue uh, too low for a while in China. So these efforts have made China financially much safer. And as a consequence, there will be a slowdown in economic growth. Part of it is, of course, um, uh, kind of triggered by external factors, but much of this is the deliberate effort of the government to slow down the credit growth, etc. Now, of course, uh, growth has now become more of an issue. The government is always treading between the line between financial risk and economic growth, and now they're shifting their uh, focus more on revamping uh, the growth. And they, as you know, Dr. Fang has mentioned, China has a whole set, the Chinese government has a whole set of tools that are not normally available uh, to other economies, uh, whether it's the massive uh, assets on the government balance sheet or the huge amount of saving uh, in China, or just the simply coordination, coordination of different state-owned banks and state-owned um, you know, local governments. All of these things matter. That said, despite the fact that there are a lot of instruments to work with, I think China's main challenge is really how to unleash the real potential of the real economy. Uh, right now, monetary policy is expanding. You're injecting uh, more liquidity. You're uh, you know, pushing for proactive fiscal policy, reducing taxes. But the credit gets stuck in the financial sector. If it actually goes into the real economy, we are confident that there are real big forces of, of um, you know, positive changes for the Chinese economy, whether it's entrepreneurship, it's innovation, the fact that services are rising, service productivity is rising, urbanization. But the trouble is really the financial system and how to match uh, the investment and the savers and also give the household more ability to consume, right? If, you're, if the real interest rate on bank deposits, which, you know, most of the saving is stuck, is earning zero in the last 10 years or 20 years while the economy is growing at, you know, 6 to 8%, you are not giving that potential to the households and to the private sector. So it's all about unleashing the latent dynamism in the private sector. Do you think the opening up of markets, do you think this trade uh, issue with the United States will, in fact, impact the real economy in China? I think that trade war has come as a benefit in disguise because it is serving as the uh, external pressure for China to undertake some of these really important reforms. And as Excel has mentioned, financial services has uh, opened up or is really um, kind of on schedule to open up uh, vastly. Uh, consumers are now able to purchase many more goods from the U.S. and from the rest of the world. China needs competition. So the financial sector needs competition. It needs to be injected with new blood. And it is such things uh, that will uh, help with that. So opening up in general, which is consistent with China's uh, longer-term goals, is simply accelerated by the recent trade war.